So we've got the minutes from the Fed. We had that US CPI print. Are yields, Treasury yields, going to continue to move higher from here? There is a fair chance that it actually continues. The Fed was fairly clear that they are confident in the outlook. The data and the inflation front are also confirming that the trend is picking up, at least on the underlying components. And therefore, it's really highly likely that the Fed continues its gradual pace of normalizing throughout this year. What does that mean for the 10-year yield this year and beyond? I think there is, a, there is some room for, for further upside from here. We had some consolidation over the past few weeks, given the risks uh, on the outlook, especially on the, on the trade tensions. But clearly, if, if it's confirmed that inflation continues to pick up, well, we should at least gain 10 to 20 basis points through, the, through this year. So you're looking at, what, 3% end of 2018? Exactly. Around 3% for the 10-year Treasury yield uh, sounds reasonable at this point. Now, despite uh, the volatility we've had this year and some of the increasing risks around trade tensions and other geopolitical risks, you've got a, a pro-risk stance. Where are you allocating, though, or, or advising to allocate uh, within risk assets? That's right. We don't really think now is the right time to change gear. So we keep the uh, pro-growth uh, tilt in our allocations. Uh, also because from a relative perspective, the bar to invest in equities is fairly low given expected returns in bonds and expected mm -hmm. returns in cash. So we continue to believe that equities is the best place to be at the, at the current juncture. I mean, that said, you recently closed your U.S. equity position. Are you looking for an opportunity to get back in? Exactly. Uh, we had a very tactical expo exposure to, to U.S. equities after the downdraft in, in February. But our preferred allocations uh, in equities are more in Europe, in emerging markets, especially Asia. Mm -hmm. So that's looking uh, at equities then. <clears throat> also, in terms of the risks ahead for political risk, geopolitical risk, very difficult to price. You refer to them as unpriced in your outlook. So how do you work around that? Yeah, it's very difficult. I mean, these are risks that we usually... So in emerging markets, and now we are seeing them in developed markets, which is kind of new. And obviously, these, this, this make it more systemic because obviously the U.S. is a more important economy. So the way we approach it is probably to be a bit more tactical in the way we allocate our money, try to play ranges, and also try to play replacement strategies, so replacing cash with options, for example. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the yield curve, uh, some have pointed to concerns in the money markets in terms of a potential inversion of a yield curve. Of course, others have said that that doesn't signal what it used to. Do yes. you see further yield curve flattening? And if you do, does it concern you? We do. Uh, we expect, actually, the, the yield curve to flatten further throughout this year. Uh, because we think that global QE continues to push long-term yields down, even though the short end can rise because of monetary policy. But I don't really think that this is a signal for anything close to the end of the cycle in the U.S. So I would say this kind of signal, which has been working in the past, maybe can be a bit less efficient this time around. What about corporate debt in the U.S.? Does that concern you, and how does that impact um, how you advise to allocate? Yes, indeed. I think... Corporate debt is very high in the U.S., mostly because companies have been optimizing their cost of capital by replacing equity by debt in a world where the cost of it was so low. So now we are ending up with very high corporate debt overall, and indeed this is probably a concern for the medium term. The question clearly is, when is the economic cycle going to turn? Because that's going to make it problematic for companies to pay back debt. And when does the economic cycle turn? That's the great question. Uh, we don't know. We are, we are fairly confident for this year. Uh, we'll see uh, in 2019 how things uh, happen, but clearly the U.S. economy for now is doing great. New volatility regime, some people are calling it. Others could very easily argue we're actually more back to normal levels after very suppressed volatility. It's been more isolated in the equity markets, though, rather than in fixed income and FX. Does this mean that fixed income and FX volatility is going to catch up to equity volatility, or does equity volatility come down? We actually expect the, 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 the former. So we think that fixed income and FX volatility should also normalize, just like it's, it just happened in, in equities. And that's really because of the monetary policy cycle. I think, as you said, uh, volatility has been suppressed by a global QE, by forward guidance. And as these things start to be unwound, we should start to see more normal conditions for markets and for volatility in particular.